G'day Maths Methods guys, I'm going to do some work for Quadratic Chapter 3L, Quadratic Models, where we can use Quadratic Models to solve real life problems. The first example from the textbook uh, for 3L is written there for you. Um, I suggest you listen to this uh, recording and take down the example as you work through it. Uh, a farmer wishes to make the biggest possible rectangular enclosure using an existing river as one side. He has 20 metres of fencing material. Calculate the maximum area of the enclosure that he can make and its dimensions. With all mathematical models, the first thing you should do is uh, to draw a diagram. And in this case we can if we have a river running along here perhaps like this we could draw a rectangular enclosure against it like that when you do a diagram you should label the sides so I'll label the width here X I could use W and I'll label the length here Y I could use L for length then you need to think what is it that we're trying to do here we're trying to maximize the area the area. So do we have a formula for area? And indeed we do. It's length by width, which for our example would be x by y. Now we run into a very typical problem. The problem is the formula that we've got for the area has two different variables, x and y. We can't graph that, solve that, find intercepts, turning points, do anything when we have two different variables there, two different variables, x and y. So we need to use the extra information in the question, and there always is extra information in the question. In this case, the extra information in the question is the fact that there is 20 metres of fencing material. So those three sides have to equal 20 metres. So 2x plus y must equal 20 metres. I can rearrange that extra information equation to get the y by itself. y equals 20 minus 2x. And then I can take that value for y and sub it into my area formula. So my area formula now looks like x brackets 20 minus 2x. I'm actually going to factorise that a little bit further by taking out the 2. 10 minus x. So now we do have an area formula and it is in terms of one variable x and indeed it's probably an equation that we're fairly familiar with. If I expanded that, that would be 20x minus 2x squared. It's a negative quadratic, which means it's upside down. And again, we can draw a, a graph, which I'll do over here. This would be area against x. From this version of the formula, we can see that the x-intercepts, let's write them down. If area equals 0, x would be 0, or x would be 10. You can get that from the factorized form. So our x-intercepts would be 0, 0, or 10, 0. And indeed, on here, we would have one at 0, 0, and at 10, 0. It's an upside-down parabola, so it goes like that. We could label these 0, 0, and 10, 0. I'm going to put open circles at those endpoints, because I'm thinking that you can't really have a side length of 0 or a side length of 10. If you did that, you wouldn't have an enclosure. Now, to solve this for the maximum area, we're looking for this point up here. It's a parabola. It's symmetrical. Pretty confident that that would be 5. So x equals 5 will be where the maximum area is. x equals 5. There's other things you could do. You could find the... Uh, so I'm just going to say x equals 5 for turning point because I was able to use symmetry I 
but you could also use x equals negative b on 2a, which would be uh, the b in this case is 20, so negative 20, and the a is 2, so negative 2, so negative 4, and negative 20 on negative 4 is plus 5. So there's a number of ways you can get that's the axis of symmetry. Negative b on 2a gives us plus 5, or if I just halve the two x-intercepts, I got plus 5. What would the area be at plus 5? The area is 20 times 5 minus 2 times 5 squared, which is 100 minus 50, which is, of course, 50. And it's an area, and the units were metres, so it's metres squared. What are the dimensions? Well, x is 5 metres, as we've already calculated. And y is, from our formula before, 20 minus 2x which is 20 minus 10, which is 10 metres. Makes sense. 10 metres for the long side, 5 for the two short sides, total of 20. That problem is finished, and I just need to work out how to... Hmm. Um, end the recording. Or is the recording even still going? I just don't know. Here we go. The recorder is recording. Click here to pause.